I have lived a surreal life for the past five years. So I have a few things to share with you. How many have heard of NSA? Heard is the emphasis. Next slide. Come to the dark side. We have cookies for you. Darth Data, elephant in the room. I used to work there as a senior executive. No such agency, never say anything, no secrets anywhere or anymore. I smile. Some have wondered, is that a security sun setting or rising? Black hole. Or, play the video. The world is a dangerous place. Every day, we are faced with new threats to our nation's security. Our adversaries do their best to keep their plans a secret. At the National Security Agency, we uncover those secrets and keep our own secrets safe. That's why NSA employs only the most intelligent people in the country. To explore career options at NSA, visit nsa.gov slash jobs and learn how you can put your intelligence to work for the safety of our future. Now you know what NSA does. I'm going to provoke, invoke, and stoke calls for asking the right questions. Internet time delivery, you're going to get 48 minutes of content in 12. We live in an asymmetric world. That's a fundamental principle here. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. That is the world we operate in. It is not certain. A couple things to remember. We no longer live in the industrial age. A lot of people still think that way, though. Knowledge age, the digital age, is very different in terms of orientation. Our social data structures are quite different, largely still articulated by the industrial age. We're moving from transactional and stovepipe to relational and network. That is a fundamentally different paradigm. And so the thinking that got us here today, the problems we currently experience from yesterday, are not sufficient and even insufficient for what we need and need to solve tomorrow. Thank you, Einstein. Consider this. When it comes to data, a frightening lack of responsibility and accountability. I used to do covert channel analysis at the software level. Lots of things were discovered in terms of holes. The national security complex is rising. It's a direct threat. Like I said, I'm going to provoke you, a direct threat to our personal freedoms and our way of life cannot coexist in a democracy. The social contract is being broken. Data is very much who we are. You fragment the data, try to reassemble it, and what, sell it back to us? We have to be extraordinarily careful about what we do with that which represents us. What about legally divided information sets? What about ownership and source of the data? Who's in charge of what? What are the authorities? What is the law? What is the policy? Who enforces? What is custom? Having the power to collect and analyze data, especially on people, is seductively powerful. Especially when it's done without the person's permission, and particularly when it's done in secret the ultimate form of control. So is it back to the future? What if the best becomes a threat to the established way of doing things? Something I ran into at NSA where the very best of America was not allowed to be used in the common defense of this country. What happens to decision making? I recently concluded a very interesting case in which the Department of Justice came after me with everything it had. 10 felony counts, charged under the Espionage Act, treating me as an enemy of the state. In other words, given the theme of this summit, I was data framed. <laughs> Imagine for the moment, as I, it happened to me over a number of years, 
everything about your life. Every electronic transaction you have ever made, every association, every friend, every neighbor, every buddy is completely peeled aside and revealed to the government. What would they know about you? Just consider that in terms of data. Bottom line, NSA sold out national security to big business and violated the Constitution. All of it was unnecessary. The means existed to go after the threat they needed to go after, both within this country and without. American into doing the Constitution were quite sufficient to protect and defend the country with the best and do so under the law. There was no, I repeat, no need to go to the dark side ever. Our country is in distress. I used to serve in the military. Those who see the flag in this position will understand what that represents. Context setting. Data absent context is data with no meaning. We have vast reams of data absent context. And all data is value laden. You lose the context, you make up the meaning. Incredibly seductive to make up the meaning, especially if you reduce the data, remove it from its context for other ends. So here is a fundamental question. For all of those of you using data to rely on your business, what do you do with your data? How do you frame your data? Benjamin Franklin, at the end of the Constitutional Convention, was asked by a woman, what has been created here? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. Note the quote about democracy, two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Is data free or the precursor for taking away our freedom? Think about it. The web of data, vast. I cannot begin to tell you the amount of data. Some of you have heard, you know, exabyte level, more in 2010 than all other years combined. This is the information age. Intelligence was once a closed system. That's the last thing it is. I used to see this quote, heard this quote. When I came in from the outside as a senior change leader, I was supposed to bring in out of the box thinking. I found out they didn't want to think out of the box. Was told no secrets worth knowing on the internet. More challenges. Major problems regarding information sharing. Knowledge was control for some. What I know data that you don't know data. What I don't know gives me power. Why should I share with you? Because I don't know what you're going to do with it. Or otherwise information hoarding. Even more challenges. Small versus massive data. I know a number of businesses out here rely on relational databases. Old school. Cannot handle exabyte, let alone petabyte, let alone multiple terabytes. I don't care how big your data farm is, it still doesn't matter. NSA is right now building massive data farms to store everything they're collecting. Classical query systems re re require compute intensive solutions. Complex queries, data mining, very hard and time consuming. It all worked against the enterprise at NSA in terms of producing actionable intelligence. We're falling way behind. Default approach is to pre-select the source data as if you knew what you were looking for ahead of time. That's an immediate bias in terms of the data. Queries were essentially stab in the dark. Classical approaches were utterly failing. Had to consider data in three dimensions, not just two, even n dimensions, and then you're running into the n squared problem. Every level you create is exponential in the number of connections that are generated sometimes called the missing z-axis, needed a whole new solution. Necessity became the mother of invention. American ingenuity and invention took on the core challenges of the 90s in the 90s and solved it. Sigint Skunk Works Lab was created. Thin Thread was the result. Actually took on how do you make sense of terabytes of information each and every minute and hour. Thin thread logo, does look like a little needle that walks about. 
is the glass mostly full or partially empty? It's not an either or proposition. Design is all the data all the time, built relationships on a worldwide scale. Enable detection network changes, automatically compiled target activity. It formed the basis for analysis across any number of variables in real time. So what did it do? Completely new paradigm. Started with the front end, not the back end. It began with the end in mind. Could scale to the highest available bandwidth. Was already functioning well before 9-11 automatically discovered knowledge as data was ingested. Validated the data over time. Never lost the context and took action on predefined rules. It also included software that was fundamentally compliant with the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment, protecting all personally identifiable information. A both and, not zero sum, as we heard earlier, but positive sum fundamental to its design. Did all of this while protecting U.S. persons, resident aliens, American citizens, and U.S. corporations. What was critical was never losing the context. If you lose any context, you lose fidelity and integrity. Some call it data normalization. If you don't do that, you have garbage in, garbage out or you try to reconstruct it later. Try reconstructing data that's been taken out of its context, put it back together again, and make sense of it. That's like taking an egg, dropping it off this stage, and letting it break. I dare you, defy you, to put it back together again inside the shell. It also did this, thin thread. Relationships across organizations. Part of a team that I was in charge of, we actually looked at the largest single database at NSA. This is after 9-11, about five months after 9-11. Let's just say management shut it down after the first query was run across terabytes of information. You know why? Because it found intelligence that had not been discovered by the traditional systems. It found both intelligence prior to 9-11, intelligence after 9-11, and they shut it down. Remember, NSA is supposed to be providing for the common defense of the nation. Velocity as a core discovery and real-time warning driver. Design is a complete and trusted management approach. But there's a dark side. There is fundamentally a dark side. At worst, it was thrown away due to a multi-billion dollar boondoggle called Trailblazer. The only thing that really was generated other than making a number of people multimillionaires was a set of PowerPoint slides. The greatest historical tragedy and what could have been is that bottom bullet, including disruption, even the prevention of 9-11. So what was lost? It had a laudatory purpose. Thin thread would find terrorists. It would modernize a very outdated SIGIN system from end to end and protect the US, its soldiers, and its allies. NSA wanted to go evolutionary. It was required, given the digital age, to go revolutionary. It was a threat. It was built on the equivalent of a Silicon Valley garage startup inside NSA for $3 million. It was ready to be deployed prior to 9-11, but instead they spent billions to solve the very problem that had already been solved by thin thread. The conclusion in that is the government with its monopoly on certain powers, sometimes has a darker side than even the most cutthroat corporate environments. So wither privacy. Surveillance, something to be afraid of. Do you know where your data is today? Or where it went yesterday? Or where your data is actually going tomorrow? So what do we do? What do we do? Is it an advancement in our society to give up our privacy because we are so enamored with technology and want advertisers and firms to, quote, market and share us with all the digital data that we give them and they have on us, opted in or not? Is our privacy now fair game? Is it now open season for commercial and government interests to exploit without any real protection? Industry self-regulation is not working contrary to some of the things you've seen and heard. So let's not kid ourselves. 
It is also patently disingenuous to claim that no names are associated or only a computer number when there's technology can discover everything there is about you electronically. People do not realize the extent to which NSA was given the authority to turn the United States of America in the equivalent of a foreign nation electronically. One of the deepest dark secrets of the US government. Data is a weapon, internet is a delivery platform. What future do we want to keep? With the cloud and other data out there, the more the data, the more it enables the Leviathan state, like letting police and government quietly demand all our records, taking the current warrantless intrusions to a whole new level. Congress has allowed this much as at stake. What tale do we want to tell our future generation? Orwell's 1984 is real and now already screamingly relevant. My baseless prosecution meant to silence those in the know. But even in the open press, we know enough about what both the industry and the government are doing. Do you care? What will you do about it? And where is your data right now? Thank you, Thomas. Uh, before I let you go off, I hope you guys can watch the 60 Minutes piece and get some more context on this. I didn't give Thomas and Neely as much time as I would like to. Um, but I would like to ask, just again, I asked you this on the phone, why would, given Thin Thread worked, the government go with a multi-billion dollar alternative that didn't work? Why have Did it really work, or? Yes. Why, why did they choose not to, to choice run? choice between $3 million and a military industrial complex that was looking to make a lot of money. And a fundamental decision to be made at the highest levels of NSA. We're going to buy the solution from our contractors rather than make it. And so what that did, it cut out all that incredible American ingenuity, the very best of both government and contractors coming together in a skunk works environment to solve the fundamental challenge problems that NSA faced. So, the so as far as you're concerned, I mean, you're outside now, this problem still isn't solved? It's not solved. Well, that makes me sleep well tonight. Thank you very much for you're coming. Welcome. Thomas Drake.